It's time to start the playoffs. We're here in Fort Worth, Texas at Stockyard Stadium. Well, we're just trying to stay dry here as it has, uh, we've got a, we've had some uh, weather blow through, but Charles, we are ready to go for this Texas two-step. Fort Worth and Alamo City, these two teams very familiar with each other, but they've never met in the playoffs. This rivalry hits a new level here today. For Ron Haynes and Justin Reside on Stats, Charles Doherty, I'm Cameron Irvine. Welcome to Fort Worth, Charles, and let's go. What are your keys tonight? Oh my gosh, this is the type of playoff game. I've told you this before. I love them when the, both teams are in the same division. There's a rivalry. They want not only division bragging rights, but they also want the opportunity to kick their rival out of the playoffs. You lose, you go home. Dag said that in the pregame show. Both of these teams are very evenly matched. The GMs have done an outstanding job building the roster as well as progressing them. I think what separates the two teams is consistency. Fort Worth has been consistent throughout the season. ACA's had some uh, two two game lose streak, four game losing streak. I think tonight they put that behind them. We're going to have a great game that I think uh, you know is going to go to the last second. Alamo City's in white and Fort Worth in blue, and we are ready to go. Wild Car Weekend in season 22 is underway. Kick it! Let's go from the 11 yard line. This is Lili Nakai on the return for Fort Worth past the 35-40. Lili Nakai out of the 42 yard line, first down for the Toros there. And Marcus Dunhill comes onto the field, 20 touchdowns this season. That is third in the SFL. In a great way to set up uh, the, the team here, the first uh, drive. Good field position by Nakai. I think every time she get, does a return, she gets a replay. Very solid, almost a 30 yard average on kick returns. Fort Worth finally got over the hump against Alamo City in week 14 of last season. It was one of the best, if not the best, game of season 21. Won 24 to 22 with a two-point conversion stop. But Alamo City's week one victory over Fort Worth, a big reason why they are in this game here tonight. As Marcus Dunhill drops to throw, he'll step back and fire. That pass is caught for an eight-yard pickup and finding Aaron Alexander out of the backfield to start this one. And let's make no mistake, Cam, both of these teams love passing. I mean, they have very, uh, very solid running skills, talent, but they really like to go to the pass, and I, I don't think we're going to see a whole heck of a lot of runs tonight. Second down and two. The handoff goes to Jay-Z Bacon, and that is for a first down for Fort Worth. Yeah, another thing about these, the, both of these defenses, I mean, very solid. Uh, one of the things that uh, eye-opening to me are the points off turnovers for both of these teams. I mean, Fort Worth has uh, 93 points off turnovers and ACA has 61. So they, they're going to make you pay when you make a mistake. Pass over the middle is caught. That is a first down. E.J. Minson, 16th in the league in receptions coming in. That's number 60 on the year. Marcus Dunhill and Fort Worth off to a great start. Yeah, and the offensive line for Fort Worth, Panda, Enorme, and Burks, uh, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of short drops by uh, by Marcus Dunhill, but they're going up against a stout defensive line by Alamo City, so they gotta got to protect their quarterback, keep him clean. The artillery defensive front, terrific. Number one in the league in sacks, Dunhill. Definitely going to have to be a fleet of foot here today as Dunhill drops to throw quickly. That pass is caught for a four-yard pickup to Stephen Hacker. And so far, Charles, it's been quick drops for Marcus Dunhill. Get the ball out of your hands, and he's mixing it up. I think that's smart. I mean, you've got uh, three outstanding wide receivers in Stevens, Min uh, Minson, and Hacker. I mean, they, they are quick off the break, great route runners, and they're you know they're going to be in the right spot when you got to get rid of it quickly. Second down and six, the handoff goes to Bacon. Bacon picks up a couple of blocks, gets skinny and gets a first down inside the red zone, down to the 17 yard line. And just like that, you know, they're uh, they're knocking on the door and put some points up. And I think it's a statement there for the, uh, for the offensive line for Fort Worth. I mean, so far they've been knocking the defensive line of Alamo City in the chops and uh, we have yet to see Alamo City respond. I know it's early, but uh, so far the nod goes to the offensive line of Fort Worth. Gordo Enorme and Aaron Alexander with a couple key blocks there. Marcus Dunhill, Charlie Baker, Jay-Z Bacon, and Alexander in the backfield. Cade Stevens, E.J. Minson, Stephen Hacker, and Lili Nakai as your receivers. That pass is hauled in by Minson now inside the five-yard line. Robert Garrett Jr., James Jennings, your tight end. Watch for Emilio Panda, Enorme, and Frank Burks on the line. I mean, a great uh, symphony between the quarterback and the wide receiver. 
the uh, wide receiver ran a perfect route, got right into the gap there where only the quarterback like Dunhill could find it. Perfect pass. And uh, again, the defense had no shot at intercepting that or even coming close to a pass deflection. Dunhill has started four for four. Bacon also has two runs. He's hit three different receivers for 39 yards. First and goal at the three and a half. Alamo City's got six down on the line. The handoff goes to Bacon. Bacon looking for a crease and gets down to about the one before he is wrestled down by Bogey Bar. His first tackle will set up second and goal. The offense, again, I'm going to mention the offensive line again. They're getting a quick start off the snap and just laying into the defensive line. A near three minute opening drive for Fort Worth. Alexander, the fullback in the backfield. They'll run right. Charlie Baker trying to get in the end zone, and it's Bo Martin Jr. with the stick. That was close, almost. Baker falling close. over the goal line. That was very close. Yeah. Ooh. I might want to reach for my little hanky on that one. <laughs> Third and goal. Could Alamo City get a goal line stand? Toss play out to Jay-Z Bacon, breaks off a tackle. Bacon is stopped at the goal line. Bogey Barr with the stick. What a play by the artillery with the force a field goal. Oh, I mean, last game, Bogey Barr was on fire. Five tackles, a tackle for loss, and an interception. And he just shows what kind of skill he brings to the, that, uh, that linebacking crew, able to stop that key run on third down. That, Charles, is playoff football. It just feels differently sometimes as that uh, field goal is good. A 10-play, 57-yard, 3-minute, 45-second drive for Fort Worth, but it ends in three points after three straight stops by the Alamo City defense to keep this game 3-0. I mean, that shows you I mean, you're, we're dealing with a, a quality defense. I mean, they get punched in the nose a couple times, but then right when it comes to uh, where it really counts, they uh, dig their heels in and knock the other guy on his keister. Kick is away from Fort Worth, and Alamo City will get their first offensive chance. That ball goes out of the back of the end zone. You saw that short kick at the 11-yard line, so uh, we can only assume Fort Worth has the win strongly at their back in this quarter. Ace Fennec gets his uh, first touch of the season in the postseason. 63.4% completion percentage. That was best in the SFL. First down and 10 at the 20 with split backs in the backfield. Fennec will start with a pass. Fennec has to scramble away, but does so successfully. Tried to fire it down the field, uh, but the pass is incomplete. Vin Calia was the intended target. Yeah, that, that's not your prototypical Ace Fennec drop back. I mean, he showed he was able to extend the play a little bit by taking a couple steps out of the pocket, but uh, thrown into triple coverage, especially uh, against that Fort Worth defense, is a no-no. Fennec also third in the league in QBR at 85.6 and doesn't throw a ton of interceptions either, just 15 through 12 games. Second down and 10, Fennec back to pass again. The blitz is picked up. That uh, pass is Ooh. incomplete. Off the hands of Yeo Montana, who has six touchdowns this season, top 10 in the SFL, but will set up an early third and long. Yeah, and so far we're seeing a lot of hitting on both sides. And on that particular one, Aiden Davis just uh, hit uh, Yeo and uh, he wasn't able to hold onto the ball. Five wide, empty backfield here for Alamo City on third down and 10. Fennec to throw against a four-man rush, looking for someone to get open. Clean pocket pass is incomplete. That time looking for uh, Ziggy Hronick. So three different receivers targeted on the first three plays, but last season's MVP Delaney Nash was in the area along with others, and Alamo City goes three and out real quick. I mean, that play cam was just a man-on-man -man coverage. The best, let the best man fight for it and, uh, and, and, you know, get the uh, advantage. And on that one, it was Fort Worth. Nice series, way to uh, stop the drive of a ACA. Punt is away. Again, uh, with the wind in, in Alamo City's face, Cade Stevens returns that up to the Fort Worth 47-yard line. And uh, back comes uh, Marcus Dunhill, who had a... Beautiful opening drive. Yeah, and against uh, <laughs> my initial comments about Fort Worth, he showed a pretty good uh, mix of run and pass on that last series, and to, uh, and to a lot of uh, uh, you know effectiveness until they got close to the end zone. Let's see if they go back to that uh, drawing board. First down and ten at the forty-seven yard line. 
Dunhill drops back to pass once again, nearly uh, hit and got rid of it a little earlier than he wanted to, perhaps, as Minson was the intended target. His first incompletion. Yeah, I don't necessarily hate that pass because he didn't have anything downfield, but the pocket was breaking up quickly. He had to do something and, uh, you know, don't get an interception, don't get a sack. I think that was, that was a heads-up play. Alamo City's defense, Stephen Fellows the second, Robert Thump, Tina Begin, and Javu McSlim on the line. Zach Benjamin, Jay Mart, Bogey Barr, and Rob Foraker are your linebackers. We'll get to the defensive backs here in a moment as Dunhill drops to throw. This time a cleaner pocket and a better catch to Cade Stevens. First and 10 into artillery territory. I mean, they, Fort Worth makes it look easy. Not a lot of space to operate in. But Stevens, I, it just shows they're all, you know, KG veterans. Stevens gets right in the only spot where Dunhill could throw it, and Dunhill just throws a, a, a magnificent pass to the wide receiver. A talented defensive backfield, Jukin Rukin Jr., Michaela Foraker, Rob, Ron Hoff, Mickey McGuire, Bo Martin Jr. are your corners. Rain Rie, Willie Bands playing free safety. Albert Begin, your lone strong safety uh, to watch out for on the roster. McGuire, Hoff, and Begin, all nine season veterans. First down and 10 for Dunhill. Dunhill again, a quick throw. That pass incomplete as the Cowboy, Robert Garrett Jr., was well covered. Had the, the secondary on uh, Alamo City lined up past 10 yards, so they put a lot of responsibility on that linebacking crew of, uh, of ACA to hold their own, and they did on that one. Second and 10. Offset eye. Alexander's got one catch for eight yards, so go out into the pass pattern. This time Dunhill, though, firing over to Minson. Caught down to the 16-yard line as Ron Hoff. Spins him down, Fort Worth right back into the red zone just one minute later. I mean, Dunhill just knows how to pick a defense apart. He knows he only had a, a couple seconds there to get it to the receiver before he's going into safety coverage. Just uh, delivered a laser. Off got dragged about four yards. E.J. Minson show, showing his toughness there. There's his early numbers, the three receptions, 46 yards. Hoff had 45 tackles at corner, five pass deflections, two picks this season. The handoff goes to Bacon, and Jay-Z's got six down to about the 11-yard line. He's got 25 yards on his first five carries. I mean, just smart. I mean, after a series of successful passes, you throw in a run like that, you get six on it, and you know your offense is doing good. 4.25 to go in the first quarter, and Alamo City has not gained a yard, but their defense trying to stand tall here. If they could force another field goal or turnover, it would feel like a major victory. Dunhill dropping to throw, now has to scramble away. Fires to an open receiver, but a little bit off target. That was Robert Garrett Jr. again on the, uh, uh, or the intended receiver. Yeah, I mean, it just was, uh, he was facing the wrong way, and, you know, they don't, they don't get the tight ends and uh, running backs too involved in their passing game, so maybe it's just uh, you know lack of repetition. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, if you throw, if you get enough uh, catches out there and targets, you know, I, I think they might have been able to get that get get that one in. Dunhill to throw. Dunhill fires to the end zone, incomplete, but a penalty marker in the end zone. I think that's going to be pi. That's a big break for Fort oh, Worth. Oh man! Check to uh, check the replay to see. What was up down the field? Yeah, that's a, that could potentially be a huge mistake for uh, for the defense of Alamo City. Yeah, that looked like an early hit. It's called on Albert Begin, impeding the receiver's route. Begin 88 tackles on the season, just uh, eight behind Rain Rie. The difference between 25th and 11th in the SFL in total tackle. So now first to go on the one, Alamo City's defense right back where they were just a couple minutes prior, but did get the stop. Dunhill gonna drop the throw. Dunhill fires short. That pass is literally short to EJ Minson. Didn't get enough mustard on that one. We'll set up a second and goal. Yeah, Minson had a had a, a shot at that one if the ball would have been delivered a little bit more accurately. That was one of the, the, the I wouldn't say the best passes of uh, Dunhill tonight, but his, uh, his pocket was breaking down. Uh, he was starting to get under duress. He had to get rid of that quickly. Two in the backfield with Dunhill. Second and goal, expecting a run here. This is James Jennings going in motion. He has one catch this season for 17 yards. Hand off to Bacon, and J.C. Bacon for dramatic effect. Dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Fort Worth. 
we have our first touchdown of the season 22 playoffs. Yeah, I think the key on that series was the, inter the uh, pass interference call in the end zone uh, that gave them perfect position. Uh, two drives back to back by Fort Worth where uh, first one they sputtered as they got close to the end zone. The second one, they learned from their mistakes and uh, took it in. And now we're looking at a, potentially a 10 nothing lead. Bacon scores just his fifth touchdown on the season as Amelia Rose's extra point is good, 10-0. Toro's over the artillery, still very early in this one, but Fort Worth has to love how they started. Uh, they were just one yard away, Charles, from a perfect 14-0 beginning. Well, definitely, I mean, I, I loved it. I mean, they, they mixed in a little bit of run there, effective run. Every one of their runs, I think, was uh, for a positive gain. But uh, the, the, the route running of those receivers has just been off the charts. Kick is away, nine yards deep. Not going to get a chance to return to the second quarter. That's Ronick back there. We're back. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Have some storms rolling through here at uh, SFL headquarters. Uh, you may have missed just one play. It was the first play of the drive for Alamo City, and it's a good one. Ace Fennec to uh, Yayo Montana for the first down. Yeah, I'm not sure you were able to hear this, Cam, before we uh, lost that connection, but, you know, Ace Fennec is probably the guy I'd want to have as my quarterback if I was down 10 10 nothing. I mean, he's a cagey veteran, very calm in, in uh, situations like that. He's the right guy. Fennec hands it off to Rain Storm. First run of the game for Alamo City. Picks up a yard. That's Sky uh, on the tackle. The Fort Worth defense includes Jeff Duffy, Jerry D. Gone, Luther Gone, and John Nevels up front. A talented defensive line in their own right. Linebackers, E.K. Vincent, Sonny Sky, J.L. Browning. Corners, to uh, Tavias Gordon, Adam Leach, Remington James, and Aiden Davis. Safeties, Ben Stone and Delaney Nash. Ace Fennec drops to throw on second and nine. That pass is incomplete right off the hands of the intended target. That was Hank Earl Troll, who has 11 grabs on the season, but another long third down coming up. Yeah, you got to, in a playoff game, you got to pull those in. I mean, it hit, in, hit him in both of his paws. Uh, you know, you got to you gotta lock onto that one and uh, get some positive yardage. Third down and nine. Play action from Ace, clean pocket all day to throw. Somebody's got to get open. The pass is incomplete. Man, the coverage down the field was blanketing. Kenny Hendricks and others. Hendricks, the speedster deep threat, couldn't come down with that. And Alamo City, despite a good start to the drive from Montana, uh, stalls out. We'll have to punt again. Yeah, I mean, every time we've seen Fort Worth in that man-to-man -man coverage, they, it's just been... Uh... It's been uh, spot on, no, no mistakes, and uh, haven't had any completions against them. If Fort Worth wins, they would be guaranteed to uh, face the DC Dragons in the quarterfinals. If Alamo City wins, they would be guaranteed a date with Canton in the quarterfinals. Um, so that much we do know after the result of this game later tonight it is tulsa at vancouver a rematch of the season 18 quarterfinals it's the only matchup this weekend that we've ever seen in the postseason the 
Fort Worth's offense back to work as Jay-Z Bacon's actually going to be dropped for a loss, and this is the first time we've really seen some significant uh, victories up front by that talented defensive line uh, cleaning up the play on the back end was Four Acre. Yeah, Four Acre did nice tackling, but I think the setup was the defensive tackle uh, McSlim held up the, the running back just enough time to get some of his buddies in for help to uh, clean it up. Second down, 11. Jay Mart showing a blitz. It's picked up. Jay-Z Bacon trying to get away, and Bacon will be combo stopped by Martin Jr. and Barr, and this will be uh, more challenging. Third and seven for Fort Worth in the early going. Yeah, I mean, the uh, Alamo City artillery, they've got such incredible closing speed. I mean, I thought that was going to turn out to be a, a good run, but uh, lo and behold, they just close it down and shut it. Third down, seven. Alamo City backs off, and Marcus Dunhill's pass is incomplete. Looking down the field for Minson, and it looked like it just popped right off his hands, Charles, as that's going to set up fourth down. Yeah, I mean, it was good coverage downfield as well, and it looks like the uh, defense of Alamo City is starting to settle in there, and uh, you, you, I, I'm thinking that uh, they're probably going to respond on offense. Alamo City's defense with their first true stop of the day. We'll send on the punter, Tom Ruin. Deep kick all the way to the 16 with the wind as Montana gets a decent return out to the 26-yard line. So Alamo City settling in just a little bit here. Uh, they We may have missed it uh, during our technical difficulties, but uh, we were talking about Ace Fennec, the most accurate quarterback in the league, off to a surprising one-for-six start. And that's all credit to the, the, the downfield coverage of Fort Worth. I mean, again, man-to-man, -man, they've just been unstoppable. 158 to go in the first quarter. 10-0 of this wild card opener here in season 22. The 12th seeded artillery, the 5th seeded Fort Worth Toros doing battle. Ace Fennec dropping to throw. That pass is nearly picked. In fact, I don't know how Delaney Nash didn't come down with that. That's a huge break for the artillery second down. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, you got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Montana versus Leach. I mean, that's playoff. That's a, that's a playoff matchup in its own. And then Delaney Nash comes over at the last second and just uh, closes it down. Fennec has got to keep it together here. Second down and 10 at the 26. Nickel look for Fort Worth's defense. Fennec drops to throw against a four-man rush. Another clean pocket. Fennec looking for someone to get open down the field. And that pass is incomplete. Off the hands of Ronick. Both uh, or the receiving core of Alamo City really letting Ace down here in the early going. They got to get the jitters out. Yeah, I, Cam, I can't add much to that again. They have, in a playoff game like this, you got to bring them in. There's a couple plays where it just hit the hit their players in the hands and hit the turf, and that's uh, it's not what they want to happen. That was a good look from Ace. Now a dime set up for Fort Worth's defense on third down and 10. They fake it to Brad Jones. Fennec fires down the field. The pass is incomplete that time. Well covered. Looking for Calia down the field. This Fort Worth defense is suffocating right now, and they're not doing it, Charles, up front. They're doing it in coverage. Yeah, and well, you know, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go against you a little bit here, my my friend. Luther Gond on that one did not fall for the play action and smelled blood and was making a beeline to Fennec and he had to get rid of that ball. Hunt is away for Alamo City. Gets it up to the 46 yard line. And uh, that'll set up Cade Stevens and the rest of this Toro offense with more good field position. The Alamo City defense playing a little bit better. Just need a big play. And what, yeah, they need a turnover, I think, at this point to get some momentum on their side. First touchdown of the playoffs scored by Jay-Z Bacon. A few minutes ago, he's got 29 yards on eight carries so far. Dunhill's 6 of 11. 471 yards. Dropping back to pass is Dunhill. Fires into a crowd of uh, artillery defenders. That was Minson again who was the intended target. Yeah, a crowd in the secondary, but also they sent uh, some extra folks in there to say hello to Marcus Dunhill, and I think that impacted the play there. Looks like, uh, like to your point earlier, it looks like the defense of the artillery is starting to settle in there and, uh, and start uh, putting some pressure on the quarterback of Fort Worth. 
Second down and 10 for Dunhill and the Toros. Minson goes in motion. Dunhill started four for four. He's just two of his last eight. Mm. On a second down and 10, Dunhill to pass again. Dunhill down the field, incomplete. Minson was in extremely tight coverage. And now Alamo City's defense is banding together. I think that was Bo Martin Jr. covering. They uh, did a motion into uh, coverage of Bo Martin. Not sure that was a great idea, but <laughs> Bo Martin is, uh, you know, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. It is tough to complete passes deep down the field like that at this stage of the season. These two teams are out here hitting third down and 10. Alamo City shuffling their defense around. Now Dunhill moving to his left. Dunhill now fires back to the right. Caught oh, by Minson as Martin Jr. Holy was caught smoke. in no man's land. First and 10 for the Toros. I mean, that was that was uh, artistic for Dunhill. He, it doesn't look like he had anything. Did that turnaround pass and just saw Minson at the last second and just threw a cannon to him. I don't know what Martin Jr. was looking at uh, down the field. I, he, it was pretty bad timing, Charles, because he kind of looked over his shoulder to make sure no one was behind him. That's, that's what you want out of that deep zone, but ball was coming right towards him. Now first and 10 of the 25, that pass is incomplete. Mart was running over to E.J. Minson and may have distracted him a little bit. Yeah, I think with the exception of that last play, I, I, I think the, uh, the Alamo City secondary is starting to settle in and see where they can... Uh, what they need to do to uh, kind of take control here of the passing game. 10 offensive plays for Alamo City and 24 for Fort Worth here in this opening quarter. The Toros on pace for 100 offensive plays in this game if things don't turn around. Handoff goes to Bacon. Bacon going to break off a tackle and then a second before he is ushered down by McSlim. A seven-yard pickup sets up third and three back in the red zone. I mean, that's... Uh... Uh, he shook off bogey bar, which is no easy task, and, and got got a pretty good uh, run after that one. So uh, hats off to that young man. Bacon's running strong to start. Third down and three for the Toros. Alamo City trying to keep this a two-score game. They need the 15 for a first down. Oh, and no, Dunhill no. runs right into a corner blitz. Ron Hoff gets the Ooh. sack for a loss of six, and that'll bring back Rose. Oh my gosh, when Ron Hoff went off the line there at the snap and he saw the quarterback doing a rollout into his coverage, I'm sure he, he was, he thought he just won the lottery. Just lower down the shoulders and, uh, you know, drop the pain. Dunhill, very lucky that he did not get hurt on that wow. play. He was slow to get up as Ron Hoff absolutely crushed him. This is from 42 yards away. Again, the wind right now at the stockyards is at the back of Amelia Rose as that field goal is up and good. It looks like a pretty straight on wind here today, Charles, uh, but uh, it's gonna be interesting to see who gets it in the fourth quarter as Rose makes this 13 to nothing. Yeah, and I think this is a call out to the uh, Alamo City offense. Uh, the defense is doing everything they can. You know, they're making great hits, uh, great uh, coverage, uh, pressure on the quarterback. The offense so far hasn't really shown a lot. They have to in this playoff game. They need to step it up. That's the end of the first quarter. Alamo City nothing. Fort Worth 13. We got a good game going on here in Fort Worth. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Wild Card Weekend on SFL YouTube alongside Charles Doherty, Justin Reside, Ron Haynes on stats. I'm Cameron Irvine. And Alamo City... Probably did not have the quarter that they would have wanted, but they're still in this thing. Their defense has been playing pretty good as Rona gets it up to the 30-yard line. And that was a nice little uh, little shimmy out there by Ro Ronick to uh, add some yards to it. But it's, to your point, the offense of uh, Alamo City, uh, I mean, has has been anemic. They have to they have to do something. They have to find something to get some uh, positive, sustained drives and put some points on the board before the end of this half. First and 10 at the 30 for Alamo City. Fennec will go back to the air attack, and that is caught by Vin Calia, his first haul in of the day for an Alamo City first down. That's that's a trademark Alamo City pass route right there. Uh, you know, you put the ball out there and let your wide receivers do what they do best. Good route running, great hands, able to uh, to get a good positive gain there.
First down and 10. That is uh, now back-to-back -back drives that Alamo City has started with a completion down the field. One to Montana. And one to Kalia as Brad Jones gets uh, his second carry of the day and sets up a second down and seven coming up. This artillery offense features Fennec, Jones, Rainstorm, Kenny Hendricks, Ziggy Ronick, Yeo Montana, Vin Kalia, Garrison Blue, Hank Earl Troll on the line, Jamarcus Candy, David Parker, Yogi Barr, Charles Michael, and Jukin Rukin as Fennec quickly down the field fires it to Troll for the first down. Uh, the Toros in coverage, I don't think was expecting the ball to get to troll that quickly. And he comes up with a move of the sticks. Yeah, he made up for that last pass. I mean, he, he's, uh, you know, pretty decent threat in the the short to uh, medium range. You know, keep keep him and as well as uh, Blue engaged in your offense. Troll in his fourth season has uh, really come on strong, has improved every season he's been in the SFL, sticking it out, trying to... Uh, Make an impact, he's certainly done that so far today. That pass is uh, caught by, I think that may have been Kronick on the outside. Sec nope, Montana, second and two coming up. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, it looks like the offense is starting to uh, get a little momentum here. You know, they're not trying to push it too deep. I mean, take the, the secondary, take what the secondary's giving you, which is those short and medium routes. Fennec started slow, but there you see three straight completions here on this drive as he hands it off to Brad Jones, and Jones has a first down. Ooh. Alamo City continues to move, and Charles, if they take a couple more minutes off this clock, all of a sudden it'll just be a one-score game nearing halftime. Yeah, and you, you put a uh, little helmet sticker, give that to Garrison Blue on the, the, down, the blocking on that one, set that one up for a first down. First down under eight to go in the first half. Fort Worth up 13-0. Fennec drops to throw, now scrambling to his oh. left. Tried to get away, and coming oh. all the way around the end, Jerry D. Gond chases down Ace for a loss of five. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Went right into the uh, the pass protection, and <laughs> it, it kind of took him out of his, uh, his vision downfield, and he just paid for it. 23rd sack of the season for Fort Worth. That was ninth in the SFL coming in. Gond led the unit with six and a half. That was 13th best in the SFL. Now seven and a half counting the postseason. Second down and 15. Play fake from Fennec. Fennec has all day to throw. Fires down the field. The pass is called in at the 10 yard wow. line. Ace finds Kenny Hendricks with just his fifth grab of the season for the first down. I tell you though, when Kenny Hendricks touches the ball, he makes an impact. He's got a 29.5 Yard average, and that catch right there, sir, doesn't hurt that that uh, number whatsoever. And that is not an easy play to make, Charles. No, in the, the double coverage. First and goal is the artillery who had 20 yards of offense in the first quarter, have 60 yards of offense on this drive. Hand off to Jones, Storm rather, picks up two on Rainstorm's second carry, second and goal. Yeah, last, last game he had his first touchdown of the season, so uh, maybe he'll get his second here in the playoffs. Four different artillery receivers now have a catch of over 14 or 13 yards. 6.38 to go in the first half. Looking for their first points up on the board. Montana, who was on the line, now goes in motion from right to left. Split backs, back to pass. Fennec checks it down as he was about to get pummeled. And then a strong open field tackle from E.K. Vincent, his first, will set up third and long. Yeah, solid coverage by Fort Worth on defense. A little trickery on the ACA side, having, uh, <coughs> having uh, Soto line up as a tight end. Went out wide, but he was blanketed. Four receivers, three by one for Ace on third down and goal for the artillery can Fort Worth. Come up with a defensive stop. Play fake from Ace. Ace looking for someone to get open. Back of the end zone. Triple coverage incomplete. It was blanketed once again. I don't think Fort Worth's falling for that play fake, Charles. And Alamo City's going to have to kick a field goal. Yeah, I, I think anything over 15 yards is uh, no fly zone for, uh, for ACA because uh, the defense, the secondary for Fort Worth is just playing out of their minds. Ben Stone was in coverage, his second pass deflection, seven on the day already for the Toros. Matt Fennick uh, comes on for the Alamo City field goal to put points up on the board. He's 18 of 19 
this season with a long of 48. Fenix kick is on the way and good. Now Alamo City, there is an injured player on the play. Oh, oh my man. goodness, that's Hank Earl Troll on special teams. Mm. But it's 13-3 artillery. They stopped the bleeding momentarily. Yeah, that's that's not good. But, hey, you know, they, they walked away with three, and that was huge. I mean, they had to put some points on the board here. Uh, the deficit's 10. You know, it's, it's, it's clear within their reach. So, uh, you know, decent drive. They just kind of sputtered as they got close to the end zone, and Fort Worth did the same. So, you know, there's, uh, there is still light on the field. So now Fort Worth with the wind in their face will take over with 5.53 to go in the first half. Yeah, plenty of options for Fort Worth. I mean, they've they've been successful on the run, successful in the pass. It's just, you know, you know, pick what you want to do at this point. If you're new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sideline and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and begin your career or just meet the stars of the SFL on and off the field. It's never too late to get involved as Bacon will scoop up five. Yeah, that's, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad to see the, uh, the nice mixture of run and pass by Fort Worth. And uh, Jay-Z Bacon is, you know, every time he's touched the ball, he's made the best of it. This season, Fort Worth 343 passes, 331 runs. Today, 15 passes, 11 runs. Now 12 runs. Charlie Baker breaks off a tackle. Nice. Baker trying to get the first down, and Ron Hoff struggling Ooh. with him just shy of the sticks. I mean, that was all Baker. I mean, he uh, it looked like he was going to get shot shot down there, like making it a third and three, but he just kept trying, did not give up, no quitting him, and, and made it third and one. Ron Hoff at corner leads the team in tackles right now with five to go along with that sack that he had on the previous drive, third and one. Hoff's at the bottom of the screen right now. Handoff goes to Bacon, and he Ooh. runs right through a wide Ooh. open lane. Is that you, Moses? I mean, that was the Pennsylvania turnpike. That, you know, like 18, eight lanes on each side. Great blocking by the offensive line for Fort Worth. 4.40 to go. Fort Worth keeps the drive alive. Dunhill sitting on exactly 100 Passing yards today, 73 of those have gone to E.J. Minson. Hacker now goes in motion. Sets his back foot on the three and 30. Dunhill to throw against a four-man rush. That pass is hauled in by Steven Hacker for a first down. There's another injury on the field. That's to the the oh, Alamo no. City defense, that's Rain Rie. So Willie Bands is going to have to come in. The artillery injury bug continues for this team. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, next man up. But, man, losing, you know, Rio is going to be, uh, it's gonna be a, a big dent in the, in the defense there. I mean, he's a, he's a very solid tackler at free safety. Stephen Fellows, the second, was coming in on a twist. I thought he was, uh, was going to get there, but Dunhill stays composed, 8 of 16 for 117 yards now. As Alexander goes in motion, Alamo City quickly trying to uh, get the trainer some help. Oh, that pass is incomplete. Bo Martin Jr. nearly picked it off. Alamo City brought nearly everybody. Dunhill yep. got hit as he threw. That was a nice changeup. Yeah, that pocket was broken down at the snap. I mean, there, there wasn't anything to do. Had to get rid of that ball. Four seventeen to go in the first half. Thirteen three Toros. Dunhill's pass incomplete. Ooh. Looking down the field, but could not find the intended receiver. That's Willie Bands, who came in yep. for Rain Rie making the play. Man, he he stepped up, but it's a playoff game. Hate to be a <laughs> hate to be a nitpicky here, but you got to grab that man and <laughs> take advantage of it. I mean, your team's down by ten. Four fourteen to go in the first half. Now third down and long for the Toros. 
Haven't been in this situation much. They're three for six on third down. Dunhill fires that pass is incomplete. Had to get rid of it as ACA was bringing the pressure and the artillery defense once more comes away with a stop. I think part of that pressure was uh, Jukin Rukin Jr. Just did that corner blitz, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, the corner blitz off the edge there and <laughs> Dunhill heard him coming and had to get rid of that ball. Here's your updated stats in this one. Alamo City 84 yards despite 0 for 4 on third down in this ball game. Montana calls for a fair catch at the 22 yard line and back to work goes Fennec. 6 of 15. Remember he started 1 for 9 so he's 5 of his last 6 trying to get the artillery back down the field. And he's starting to, you know, get uh you know, get his uh his football legs going there but uh I, you know we said that Alamo City doesn't like to run a lot, but it would be great if they ran a little bit more than they have been. Toss out to Jones. There you go. And not much there. Delaney Nash cleans that one up. Two pass deflections, two tackles in the first half. Sets up second and 11. I'm shocked, Cam, with the amount of pressure both sides have been trying to lay on the quarterbacks. We've only got two sacks total. And no picks either. They right. both have been fortunate. True. Yep. Second down, 11. Fennec changing the play at the line. 3.35 to go in the first half. Ace drops to throw. Ace fires down the field. Oh, man. Just oh, stuck wow. by Ben Stone. I thought it was going to be hauled in. Stone put helmet on rib cage to set up a third and 11. And the route, it looked like the route went into the coverage where the safety had backup. He was all alone, had 10 yards deep. And, you know, an out route, I think, could have killed it on that play. Alamo City looking for their first third down conversion. Their third down offense has struggled so far today. Three by one, three down lineman for Fort Worth. That's all they bring. Eight in coverage, oh all day to throw. Fenix pass is incomplete. Fourth down, broken up by Adam Leach. Ace Fennec cannot figure out these seven and eight man drop coverages. No, I mean, he's he's putting the ball where he needs to. Uh, his Again, his receiving uh, crew, and that, that includes tight ends, they're, they're not doing him any favors. Yeah, I should say, Charles, he, he just hasn't been able to find many open receivers down the field. Certainly making some pretty good reads, but man, the Fort Worth... Defensive backfield is really hitting out there today as Cade Stevens gets the ball up to the 37-yard line. 3.14 to go in the first half. Have you ever wanted to be a play-by-play -play or analyst broadcaster? We are looking for passionate SFL participants or viewers like you to join the team for the next minor league season, kicking off next month. Please visit simulationfl.net slash broadcasting for more details on how you can get involved and get your voice on the call. Do you remember your first broadcast, Charles? Um, I did it. I remember doing a, uh, a demo where Dags was listening and uh, Moose from uh, Vancouver when I was on that team was my color commentary guy. Nice. And it was, I was horrible. I was horrible. <laughs> and I'm not great. I'm not any much better, but I was really bad then. Jay-Z Bacon, that's not true. Bacon picks up eight yards. Now, now Charles, for Alamo City, they just – they just have to make sure that they don't uh, let this get out of hand. They're in a pretty pretty decent shape uh, despite some offensive woes in the first half, but this is a big drive right here. I mean, it's only, yeah, again, it's only 10 points, and the defense has been, uh, you know, kind of uh, carrying the team. I hate to say that, but, uh, you know, it's uh, it, they could be down by much uh, much greater deficit there. So just kind of hold your own, you know, what you did so far, and, you know, don't make any mistakes, and I think uh, you still got a shot here in the second half. Second down, two, and Dunhill keeps oh, it on a sneak. Thing. Dunhill's got a first down before he can even slide. He was met uh, by an artillery defender, not before he got the first down. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Dunhill had a rushing touchdown last week at all. Let's see if, if they get closer to the end zone. They try and sneak him in again. Two twenty-two left in the half. Nice. Baker is stuck by Barr. Bogey bars up yeah. to five tackles, second and ten. Yeah, Bogey Barr is such a solid, <laughs> solid outside linebacker. Great fundamentals of tackling. You, you, I mean, with, the, with the exception of that one play that Bacon stiff darned him, got around him. He's uh, he, he's been holding his own tonight. 
Two backs, two receivers, but not before we get to the two-minute warning. Alamo City hanging tough, but Fort Worth's riding the momentum 13-3 here on the opener of Wild Card Weekend in SFL Season 22. Change up the look a bit. Offset eye out of the two-minute warning. Line splits out wide for the artillery. Been a little quiet in this first half. Fort Worth's offensive line has done some good work as Dunhill's pass incomplete. And once again in coverage, Willie Bands stepping up for the injured Rain Rie. And I think the uh, the defensive ACA was inviting them to run up the middle too. <laughs> the, the way they had the... Uh, the, the 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 defensive tackles and defensive ends so lined up close to the the offensive tackles you could have got an easy three up the middle four receivers that's Lili Nakai going in motion here on third and ten Dunhill to pass Dunhill fires incomplete. Mm -hmm. Willie Bands with the, the the stick on EJ Minson will set up a fourth down. And that was a stick. I mean, Minson is no joke. <laughs> he, he can bring the ball in when he catches it. He can just uh, break through anybody trying to tackle him. So uh, my tip my hat, sir, to you, free safety Willie Bands. The defensive backs owning the wide receivers in this first half. From the 24 yard line in Montana, Ooh, it looked like he was gonna maybe Ooh. get a couple of blocks set up, but fuck, that was man, dangerous. Fort Worth that came was in dangerous. guns blazing. Yeah, I mean, he, he has a heart of ice, man. I would be, I'd be waving my hand up in the air, <laughs> screaming out loud, fair catch, fair catch. <laughs> wow, I didn't know you got to that octave, Charles. I, hey, I can go higher, man. I, I do too, so I understand. First and 10 of the 24 yard line. Hand off to Jones, and Jones only picks up one. Alamo City in a precarious spot here, Charles, because they definitely don't like the fact they're down by 10, but you just don't want to make things worse right now, I, I would think. You know, I would, <laughs> I would not test. The secondary deep, and I've said this a million times this season, and but I would I would put the the hands into your playmakers and let them do the yak. Let them use the yak. Fennec to Ronick. It's like a little that. bit of yak there. It'll set up a third and inches. I would I would guess here Alamo City wants to get the first down before they start to go crazy. Yeah, I mean you've you know you've got uh, between Montana and Kalia and Ronick, you give it to them you know three or four yards off the line. I think they've got the ability to uh, add much more and you know at least get them in field goal range. Blues in the backfield, and that is a first down for Brad Jones up to the 39-yard line, timeout Alamo City. So they played that pretty well there, Charles, as uh, they make sure that they don't go three and out and give the ball back to the Toros. Now they can set up and get a little bit, uh, try to get some points up on the board. I mean, there's there's been the offense of VCA hasn't been you know horrible tonight. It's just that they haven't been able to string consistency in, in the drive. You know they 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 start out well and then they just kind of break down as they get closer to the goal line. Oh, just like that, Fennec picked off to the 35, 30 in the field goal range. Vincent, that's just what we talked about. Didn't want to make it worse. Vincent with the interception. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, he his last game, he, he was on fire. Nine tackles, two tackles for a loss, and a pass deflection. And uh, he's just adding on to his legacy there with that interception here in the playoffs where it matters. Shoved out of bounds by Ziggy. Now, although the uh, wind is in the face of Amelia Rose, they're about uh, 40, be about a 45-yard field goal, but they still have 48 seconds in all three timeouts here. Yeah, they are in the driver's seat here. I mean, they're, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, you couldn't ask for a better spot here with 48 seconds left. Alamo City's defense now needs to make a play. This is Dunhill oh, over to Hacker down to the 10 yard line. First and goal for Fort Worth. Timeout Toros. Yeah, I didn't see what happened on the line there. If it was, uh, if they just did short, short zone coverage, like a hard coverage on the sides, but uh, he was, he was too open. Three catches, 37 yards on five targets for Hack Attack. 
Ball's just inside the 10 yard line. Dunhill out of the shotgun, back to pass. Dunhill fires short, that pass is oh hauled in. God. Broken tackle, inside the five. Hacker walks in, silly. touchdown Fort Worth. That's just silly. Holy smokes. I mean, it started out ugly as ugly can be. It, he caught it down by his shoelaces, brought it up. I thought he was going to get lit up. Started running backwards, and I thought it was, he was going to get lit up. He just, he, you know, just shows that he's one, if not the best wide receiver in the league. Bo was on an island out there. Actually, had some pretty good hand fighting with Hacker early on in the play, but a crucial missed tackle gets Hacker in the end zone. I'm a little worried about uh, Dags with some uh, stormy skies in the picture, Charles. Hope he, uh, hope he stays safe, safe up there in that blimp. Oh, definitely, yeah. I didn't know where you were going. <laughs> Trying to process that one. But yeah, you wrap I, I it up nicely. Listen, I'm assuming he, he, he drives his own blimp. Do you drive a blimp? Do you fly a blimp? I guess you fly a blimp. You navigate a blimp. Navigate a blimp. You would know. Yep, that just navigate my own body. How, <laughs> how many people you ever think have uh, navigated a blimp on this world? Oh, I would say a handful. Just a handful? That's it? It's, uh, you know, <laughs> the uh, that one went down. You know, the Hindenburg. It, ah. they've been, it's been hard to, to hire blimp drivers. Goodyear kept uh, blimp drivers in, in, in business for a lot longer than maybe they would have expected. Yeah, no, thank you. No, thank you. So look at Roenick's return. Now for Alamo City, they're just trying to uh, stop the bleeding. They do get the ball to start the second half, so that's a positive for the artillery. But, man, they need to make some serious adjustments offensively. Yeah, I mean, the, the, but the po one positive is they're used to throwing it a lot, so it's not yep. a big you know, adjustment cutting out their running game. That is true. Fennec drops to throw. That pass caught by Kalia at the 40-yard line, and that's enough for Alamo City to take a second look at this uh, final play or final drive before the half. Look, if they get a field goal, it's a two-score game, and they get the ball to start the second half. 27 seconds left. Yep, just, just a field goal, Cam. That's all we're asking for. Split backs, two receivers for... Fennec threw that pick to Vincent right around this uh, area of the field. Delaney Nash playing linebacker right now as Fennec drops to throw. Fennec in trouble. Ooh. Fennec goes down for the sack. Wrapped up by J.L. Browning, his first play made of the game, and that may end the first half. I mean, that just was that was just unfair. <laughs> he, he, he stood there. For, it was like a delayed blitz. You know, took a second, waited for the gap to open, and just, just fired in there like a missile and brought down the quarterback. Jamarcus Candy couldn't uh, hang with Browning. Browning and gone now with sacks in the first half. Ron Hoff had a sack on the corner blitz for Alamo City, but that's how the first half is going to end. Alamo City's got some work to do. Fort Worth flexing their muscles 20 to three at the end of the first half. Charles Doherty, Cameron Irvine with you. Justin Reside, Ron Haynes on stats. Charles, uh, maybe some first half players you liked uh, out of their performances. Well, I mean, I like the uh, the overall the secondary of Fort Worth. I mean, I know you hate it when I go with a <laughs> with a group, but uh, they've been right. playing out of their minds. I mean, they they shut down a very you know high octane passing game in the, uh, the Alamo City uh, artillery. Just shut them down, and they're you know we, we talked about both of these teams are you know I hate to say one dimensional, but they really lean on their passing games. You take that out of the game, there's not a heck of a lot they can do. So. Alamo City pressures on. You got to look at uh, you know what, what you saw in the first half. The key is you know adjust right, come out there, and uh, in my opinion, you know give the ball to your uh, your stars and let them you know earn those yards. Don't necessarily try and, and push it too deep. They're losing, but Ron Hoff played an awesome half. Six tackles. Oh my gosh! And yes. a sack. He has been a difference maker for the artillery. Uh, but right now, the difference makers need to come on the offensive side of the ball for ACA. They want their season to continue. Otherwise, Fort Worth has a date with the DC Dragons next week. And you know, Cam, you don't hassle the Hoff. <laughs> Definitely not. He hassles you. Right. 
So Alamo City, it looks like they will have the wind uh, at their backs in the fourth quarter. That could be critical for talking uh, potential game tying or game winning field goals of a comeback situation. Alamo City right now is uh, just trying to get the offense right. 105 to 201, but most of that coming through the air. Do does have eight first downs in the first half. Fort Worth had 12. Fennec drops to throw. We'll see what Alamo City comes out with, and mm. that is a deflection by E.K. Vinson. Not the start they were hoping for, second and 10. But definitely not, and a good read, good vision by E.K. Vinson. You know, he read the quarterback's eyes and was able to adjust and do that pass deflection at the last second. No, Charles, Jeff Duffy says the Hindenburg was a Zeppelin, not a blimp. I was waiting for that. You know, Jeff, I said it. It came out of my mouth, and I was waiting for the chat room to kill me on that one. The internet is undefeated. That's what they'll oh tell you. Oh, my gosh. Se second down and 10 at the 20. Way to keep him in check, Jeff. Ace Fennec drops the throw, and Fennec fires to Montana, but actually he sailed over Montana's head, and he's looking around, or Kalia, rather, is looking around going, okay, come on, let's, let's get it going, third and 10. You know, and... I think in the locker room of Alamo City, there were there was a lot of equipment broken. You know, Microsoft Surface is thrown against the wall, whiteboards tossed on the ground. I mean, they, they had to do something to energize this team to get some points back on the board. Fennec on third and 10. Fires down the field. Kenny Hendricks, go. first down. Tackle by Delaney go. Nash. How about Hendricks? Four catches all season, two in this ball game. And Alamo City's drive stays alive. And both of his catches were money, and they meant something on the drive. I mean, he's he's just one of those guys you go to, you know, break glass in case of emergency. Four catches on eight targets for Troll, Ronick, and Hendricks. Four catches on 14 targets for Montana and Calia so far. First down and 10. Hand off to Brad Jones. Jones is going to rumble forward and pick up three yards. Browning with his second tackle, second and seven. Yeah, I mean back to uh, back to Hendricks. I mean it's it's great when you got a, a player like that. That's you know your number number three, number four. Excuse me, number four wide receiver that's reliable when you have to go to him. I mean most quarterbacks by the time it gets to the fourth wide receiver, the game's already the the, the series is already over. So if you've got a, a valuable receiver like that, that's a heck of a commodity to have. Second down and seven, as Ace Fennick. Will throw again, Ooh. hit to his backside. Jeff Duffy on a whiff block. <laughs> Duffy with the third sack of the day Ooh. for Fort Worth. I mean, we haven't said this yet tonight, but uh, Alamo City, that offensive line is going up against two bookend uh, defensive end and Duffy and Gone that are beasts. And uh, they've been relatively quiet tonight, but it, there's it's only a matter of time. And uh, you know, Duffy got loose on that one after he chastised me in chat. Jamarcus Candy uh, struggling just a bit. Very unorthodox to uh, of, of a game for Jamarcus Candy. He's a terrific left tackle. Let Ace down there. So another third down and long. Fennec's got to get rid of it. That pass incomplete. Looking for Kalia. And that sack pretty much uh, nailed that drive. And Alamo City will have to punt again. Yeah, to your point, Cam, uh, Jamarcus Candy, he's, he's the best pass blocker in the SFL. Yeah. And he's going up against Jeff Duffy. I mean, that's a key matchup on that line. And on that particular play, Duffy won. Like I said, uncharacteristic performance right now from Candy. Got to clean things up. Fort Worth defensive line starting to eat just a bit as uh, this uh, return will only get up just past the 29-yard line for Stevens. 8.18 to go in the third quarter. See what Fort Worth offense can do to start the second half. Bacon averaged four and a half yards a carry through the first 20 minutes. And, you know, the defense has been trying, you know, holding their, I wouldn't say holding their own, but uh, they, uh, I think they've been performing a lot better than the offense has for Alamo City. Just need to, to get a turnover here in, in uh, you know, deep in their opponent's territory so they can uh, set up the offense for something. And off to Bacon, and Bacon is tackled by McGuire after a four-yard pickup. The SFL playoffs roll on next week with the quarterfinals starting Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned for the full weekend schedule as Canton, Florida, Minnesota, and D.C. will host wild card winners and continue their quest for a championship. The SFL quarterfinals next weekend on SFL YouTube. 
Second and six, handoff Baker. Not much room there. Wrapped up by four acre, third and seven. I mean, I don't want to uh, be too uh, early on this, but Bacon is on his way to a 100 yard game <laughs> quietly. And, and he's pretty much stayed consistent throughout the day. Hasn't had any major runs, yep. but getting four or five yards a pop. Dunhill now fires deep down the field, Ooh. and it's overshot, incomplete. Another stop for Alamo City's defense, willing the offense to get moving. Definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's some, uh, you know, I wouldn't say heated, but there's probably some lively discussion on the sidelines for uh, – the offense to do something, especially with the defense out there too long. I mean, there's only, you know, I've said this a million times this season, defense is out on the field a long time. They start breaking down. I don't care if you're all, you know, all-star players. You, you can't be on the field that long before you start breaking down. From the 25, a little bit of room here on the return up to the 34-yard line for Montana. That's where artillery will start with a drive, a good field position there. And look, Charles, this, is the, this has been the year of the defense. I mean, Canton has a record-setting defense going on right now, so it's it's not a surprise to see defense turned up a notch uh, to start this postseason. If, if Alamo City could just put together a touchdown drive, I think I think the feeling of this game totally changes. Yeah, I think for you know, I'm going to say it for both of these teams, Fort Worth and ACA, to go deep in the playoffs. I think you need to be have two cards in your deck. One of them run, one pass. Excellent read. Both of those really well. Excellent read from Ace Fennec to Vin Kalia. The the pressure from the Toros bearing down on number twelve. Yeah, not, now's the time for uh, Soda to start heating up. Um, you know, great pass and <laughs> you know, good uh, field position there at the fifty. I mean, they're they're looking good. But like my my point is, I don't think you can be one dimensional going and go deep in the playoffs. Kalia's up to three. Receptions 44 yards. There's Fenix last 10 passes. 18 and 16, the two longest his last two completions. Handoff now to Rainstorm. Storm cuts it back and will scoop up a couple as uh, Ben Stone makes the tackle his second. Yeah, I mean, the uh, you know, so far so good for the, the ACA offense. Um, you know, they, they've got a ways to go here at the 48, but uh, I, I like what they're doing so far. Second and eight. Fennec dumps it off nice short. Bad. That's Kalia getting Whoa. six and setting up a third down and two. More of that, please. Yeah, definitely more of that. I mean, uh, Fort Worth has been showing that all day. Do those drag routes across the middle. I think you can uh, really get some movement on your offense. Third and two. ACA moving. Handoff. Brad Jones didn't. Oh. Wow. Well, they said that he got there. I think Fort Worth's going to challenge I have no him. idea how they gave him a first down. Either way, Charles, I think it's uh, go time for Fort Worth. Yeah, definitely. Or but Vincent City, was rather. all over that one. Wow, no challenge. That's Holy a smokes. break. They're not even going to have to attempt the fourth and one. Generous spot for Brad Jones as Alamo City catches a break. Hand off to Rainstorm. Not much there as that's cleaned up by Sunny Sky. Yeah, the linebacker. You can't, you know, I've been you know bragging on the the secondary for Fort Worth all day, but you also have to give credit for that uh, linebacking crew. They've uh, been pretty stout tonight. Second down, five eighteen to go in the third quarter. Twenty to three, Fort Worth in this wild card opener. Fennec changing the play, moving Calia around, trying to make something happen. And he just passed the 30. Fort Worth bringing some pressure. That pass is caught oh, in double smoke. coverage. Just shy of the first down, but another terrific grab from Yeo That's Montana, insane. his third catch. That's that right there. That's the uh, prototype catch for uh, Yeo Montana. In a crowd, brings it down. You don't think he's going to catch it, and lo and behold. And Coach Soto frustrated uh, to, uh, or is uh, looking to, I guess, continue his streak of positive spots we're going to take a uh, retroactive look at the play presented by retro get your console at sflretroid.com and uh, just preceding that play that was your nice hands catch also brought to you by retroid put a retroid handheld in your hands and play 
the only video game with your player in it. Did he get the first? I'm not really sure. Not sure, not sure if he did, but, you know, Coach Soto, he left a dent in the uh, surface there. He needs to replace his divot. It's overturned. Now, are they going to give him the first down? That's the question. No, it's going to be third and inches. But, wow. but the good news is, is with precious timeouts, down 17 in the third quarter, at least Alamo City did not lose any timeouts. They did uh, win a more favorable spot. Yep. Yeah. That's the time for a quarterback sneak up the middle. Third and inches for Alamo City. This is the seventh play of the drive. Handoff, Jones. I don't oh. think he got. Oh, they gave it to him again. That wow. may be challengeable. Oh, it's getting dicey here. This is crazy. Crazy. <laughs> no challenge. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Fort Worth is saying we don't need challenges. We're going to get this stop regardless. Handoff, rainstorm, and that oh, play blown oh. up by Jerry D. Gone in the backfield. Yeah. Yep, he, Jerry D. Gone just really, <laughs> really shut that down and uh, turned that play. I thought they were going to get a gain there, but man, he just uh, turned it upside down. 4.08 to go in the third quarter. Everything proving to be difficult against this Toro's defense. Fennec drops Ooh. to throw, can't take a sack, pass caught by Ziggy, and he gets about to the 25-yard oh, line. He did it. I don't know if that was Gond or Neville's, but they did a twist, or maybe it was a mix, for a stunt. And I have never seen a defensive tackle move that quickly around the gap. That was incredible. Now empty, no extra help in protection, although Fort Worth's been dropping back in coverage a lot on third down. They're in man-to-man -man here as uh, Tavias Gordon chases a receiver outside. Fennec back to pass. It's caught! Oh. Caught at the 12-yard line. Vin Calia in double coverage. First and 10 artillery. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, if you're going to heat up, now's the time to do it. And both uh, between uh, Montana and Calia, they're catching it in traffic, and uh, you know, they're uh, stepping up for their quarterback. Alamo City's offense, it hasn't been uh, quick, but it has been effective here on this drive. First down and 10, Fennec is in trouble. Ooh, Fennec is sacked. Sacked by Browning, his second of the day. Holy smokes. Browning had it. It was another one of those plays where he just took a half a second delay and just had a beeline straight to the quarterback, and there wasn't anyone that, well, I know there was one uh, lineman trying to stop him, but he just brushed him off like he was a flea. Candy didn't know who to take. Jeff Duffy Holy was smokes. was uh, right in his face and wasn't quite sure who to pick up. Picked up Duffy. And then uh, Browning cleaned it up on the back end, second and 14. Fennec to pass again. Fires it short. That'll make a more manageable third down. Ooh. But then Calia's dragged backwards after a five-yard pickup. Third and nine coming up. Charles... Uh, 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 Alamo City was one for six on third down in the first half, but two for three on this drive. And that's huge. I mean, they need it. Right. They got to get something on the board. Third down and nine. They can get just shy of the one for a first down or a touchdown. Fennec looking for someone open. Ace Fennec back in the end zone. Touchdown! Oh, Kenny oh Hendricks God. stepping up for his team in the back oh, of the end zone. They score! What? <laughs> oh what a, the, the fourth wide receiver is just balling out tonight. Oh, and what great, a route. Great adjustment. He saw there wasn't any, the timing was at the point where he had to make an adjustment, went back into the, uh, into the field goal uh, post, and it was just a second there. Ace had to get it to him. What a great run there. Again, wide receiver number four is just balling out tonight. Kenny Hendricks, four catches this season, three tonight, and a touchdown. 20 to Holy 10, God. Fort Worth's lead cut down to two scores, a 13 play, 66 yard drive, and the artillery are right back in this thing. I mean, Cam, come on. The way he's been playing so far, he deserves a touchdown. 
he deserves you know to be at least you know targeted in the end zone. From the six yard line, a little bit of a deeper kick. That's Hendricks's second career touchdown. He had seven wow. career SFL receptions coming into this game. Of course, he was incredible last season in the minor leagues with the Nashville Tempo. Helped him into a championship, but I mean, seven catches in two seasons in his SFL career, and he has three and a touchdown yeah, here tonight. Amazing. Yeah, it's it's it is such a great story. <laughs> it's so it's so exciting to see on the field. That's why you love the playoffs, Charles. You just you never know who's going to make the story. I was screaming all over you when that touchdown happened. Oh, no, that's quite all right. I was excited too. First and 10 at the 28-yard line, and the handoff goes to Bacon. Alamo City trying to get him down, and Jay-Z somehow able to pick up four yards on that one. Yeah, Bacon's another one. I mean, he's uh, he's got up close to 70 yards today, and uh, every one of those has just been uh, pure strength and uh, athletics on uh, Bacon's part. Second down and six. Jennings goes in motion. Robert Garrett's on the other side of the line right now. Fort Worth protecting a 10-point advantage. Dunhill drops to throw. Dunhill fires it short. That is incomplete. Well covered by Rob Foraker. Here comes a third down for Fort Worth just like that. And just like that. I mean, the first, the, the beginning of the game, they would run those routes and uh, the, the wide receiver would be open and they'd be able to get a positive yard after catch. But so far, the uh, ACA defense has been able to adjust to that and just shutting down those short passes. Third down and six. Dunhill oh. smacked, and it is in. Oh, it's almost caught. Stevens was oh, looking for close. the football. That pass is incomplete. And again, you know, we gave a lot of credit to Fort Worth's defensive backfield. Now we got to look at Alamo City. Dunhill now just three of his last ten passes. Uh, quietly, and Fort Worth's going to have to punt it away. Two of his last you have 10, to, rather. You cannot, you cannot forget the role that uh, McSlim, the defensive tackle for the artillery, did on that one. He was right up on the uh, the face mask of uh, Unhill and was able to impact that play. Deep kick. I cannot believe there was no fair. Somebody's got a death wish out there. I think that was Calia. Definitely. At the 21-yard uh, line, 118 to go in the well, third quarter. Make a high note game because I will. <laughs> Hey, you know who might be starting to shake just a little bit, Charles? That'd be the Canton Classics because Alamo City knocked him out of the playoffs last season. Oh, and here yeah. we go. If Alamo City Ooh. were to come back in this game, that would be the quarterfinal matchup for that Canton. That would be a game. Oh, yeah, my probably, gosh. Yeah. Probably the last team Canton would want to see in the quarterfinals. Ace Fenix passes. Caught first down oh, at the 32-yard line. That pass hauled in by Kalia again, his seventh grab. And a great read of the field by the KG veteran Ace Fennick. He had a lot of pressure there on the right side, but was able to go through his progressions and find Kalia. Fennick now 17 of 32. Mm. Kalia at one point had two catches on nine targets. He's had five catches on his last six targets as Montana goes in motion. Top of the screen. Yeah, a lot of space up there. Top of the screen. Fennick drops it off to Brad Jones. Jones has some open space, and he makes uh, good work okay. on Vincent. Six-yard okay. game. I mean, good on Ace. I mean, the, the routes were deep. I, he didn't make an adjustment on the line. It's smart to dump it off to the halfback and get six yards out of that one. I mean, that was uh, that was something you just could not pass up. Second and four. Fennec hands it off. Rainstorm oh, has some blocks and mm. gets three on the play. So that'll set up a third down and one. I mean, Rainstorm uh, he doesn't get the ball a lot, but when he does, he is a pretty darn good runner. I mean, <laughs> it, really effective. And uh, I think that's uh, quite a luxury to have as your uh, HP2. That's the end of the third quarter. We'll have an injury report when we come back. Fort Worth 20, ACA 10. You are watching Wild Card Weekend in Season 22 on SFL YouTube. We'll be right back.
participation in the simulation football league is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. So Hank Earl Troll is the only one left on the injury report. That means Rain Rie has returned to the game, but a hyperextended elbow troll is out uh, for the rest of the contest. But uh, Rain Rie is back. That is uh, good news for Alamo City. Definitely, but you know what? Uh, Mr. Bands really held his own. He was playing out of his socks on the when uh, he had to stand in for uh, starting free safety. Third down and one. At the 42, the handoff goes to Jones. He's got the first down, and the drive Smart. continues for Alamo City again in the first half. One of six on third down. Charles, they're a whopping five for eight here in the second half, six for eight rather. Yeah, and I like I like the way they're uh, you know spreading it around, run and pass, and uh, you know keeping the drive alive. First and ten, Garrison Blue goes in motion now off to the left in an offset eye. Handoff goes to Rainstorm. He makes a man miss. Yeah, Rainstorm go, go, go. almost got a first down. Gets nine before he's twisted back around. Longest run of the game by any artillery back. And that sets up second and one. And uh, made me look smart on my uh, accolades from the previous call. Thank you, sir. Nine, Garrison 15. Blue hasn't been targeted at all tonight, which is shocking. Yeah, I agree. Nine fifteen to go, and that is short. Well, we didn't get a uh, we didn't get a first down on that one. Delaney Nash with the stick. Yeah, I mean, I would just keep I I, I would just keep to the run game here. You may be looking at four uh, four plays. Nash six tackles. Third down and one at 8.48 to go in the fourth quarter. Handoff, Jones got it again. Go. First down to the Toro 42-yard line. He just lowered his shoulder, good blocking up front, and just powered to the first down. I mean, that's what you want out of your uh, halfback, and especially in uh, crucial times like this. Eight and a half to go, fourth quarter. Alamo City was down, tw or down 20 to three at the break. Fennec to throw. Pass caught. Ooh. Kalia, first down to the 30-yard line. That's what they need. I'm telling you, those short, medium passes are money. I mean, they can do that all night. And uh, they are uh, got quite a drive going here. They're knocking at the door, and passes like this just add to it. We can only hope Tulsa and Vancouver is just as good. That game kicks off mm -hmm. in the Pacific Northwest at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. local time. Tulsa. Gabriel Manning, the top receiver in the SFL this season, MVP candidate, will take on Vancouver. Coming up next, Ace Fennec will take oh, off and run. Fennec's got a block. Fennec down to the 14-yard line, sticks his shoulder into a Toro defender, a pickup of 16. That is playoff football at its best. You don't see anything downfield. You're not known as a great runner, but heck, tuck it in and go. Get that first down. Alamo City back in the red zone. Any score here would make it a one-score game. Fennec now 19 of 34 for 214 and now 14 rushing yards. Split backs. Fennec, heavy pressure. Fennec fires. One of the coverage caught. Broken tackle. Touchdown, Alamo City. Yayo Montana makes it a four-point game. Catch that. I thought that was an interception all the way. <laughs> Unbelievable catch. That was probably one of the best catches of his career, especially in playoff time. I mean, that right there was just a battle. Woo! He lost him. That's great. I mean, I, I'm speechless. That was, that's the best catch of the night right there. What a play. What a second half for Ace Fennec. Look at that. Ten That's completions crazy. in a row with two touchdowns, three-point game. He's making me look smart, Cam. I said he's the quarterback I want when I'm down, yep. you know, in the playoffs, and he's, uh, he's proven me right so far. And Fort Worth's got to be thinking, what do we have to do to beat this team? 
One and nine all time against the artillery. They won last season 24-22 on a two-point stop. Otherwise, the amazing. artillery. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Cam. Otherwise, the artillery has been their bugaboo. Go ahead, Charles. I, uh, uh, what I would say to your comment, Cam, is uh, you just don't make a mistake. You just have to, you have to do an, ex, uh, you know, sustained drive and do not make a mistake. First and ten of the twenty. They hand it off to Robert Garrett Jr. for a pickup of seven. I think that's his first carry of the season. And that is a little trickery, and yeah. it, it worked on that one. They needed it. They needed the spark. Yep, great. Seven yards on first down. It's a good way to get something to build on. Second down and three. Seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Garrett Jr. goes in motion. He's all over the field. Eight in the box for the artillery. And Dunhill takes it himself, but he won't get the first down. Sets up a third down and one. Dangerous play. Danger, danger. <laughs> I mean, we, we saw Ace, you know, tuck it in and run on that last uh, series. But, man, you, you, you worry, especially on the short yardage when you got everybody up on the line, that your quarterback's just going to get hammered. Third and one. Hand off. Bacon. Oh, he got it. First down to the 32. Mart with the nice. tackle, but not enough. I mean, that right there, I mean, Bacon has been having a heck of a night. I mean, it's been, we, we've said it's been relatively quiet, but that right there was just pure determination to fight for that first down. 15 carries, 60 yards for Bacon. Clock continues to move, 6.05 and counting. ACA will try again. Charlie Baker on the carry. Baker's got a first down and more. Picks Smart. up 12. Smart play calling, Cam. And, and, you know, I think that the tip of the cap to Fort Worth there, we talked about them relying, both teams relying heavily on the pass. Going to the run at this point and just, you know, showing the confidence in your offensive line and your and your halfback and fullback, or excuse me, your halfback and your tight end in the backfield, it's just great. And I think uh, in the playoffs, showing that new little curve is going to do wonders. First down and 10, 5, 40, and counting. Alamo City's defense trying to get off the field and give that red hot, hot offense another chance. Hand off Bacon, more good blocking as Bacon gets eight yards on the carry. Tomorrow, Wild Card Weekend continues at 6.30 p.m. Eastern when the Atlanta Swarm head back to Houston where they lost just three weeks ago, hoping for a first-round upset. At 9 p.m. Eastern, the Baltimore Vultures welcome back the Seattle Nemesis for a Week 2 rematch. It's all right here on SFL YouTube. 5-10 to go in the fourth, handoff, Baker, and Baker can't get anywhere. Uh, Bogey Barr with his fifth solo tackle sets up a third and two. Yeah, he's been holding his own there in uh, all game. Bo Bogey Barr has been reading well and also hitting those gaps and doing some outstanding one-on-one -on -one tackles. Under five to play. The dark clouds here in Fort Worth cross the field. Toros try to keep the drive alive. Hand off Bacon. First down again to the ACA 40 as Fort Worth tries to wear him down. And it's great. I mean, this is a page in the Fort Worth book that you don't see a lot. I mean, they're just bringing their halfbacks out there and fullbacks and running it in key situation like this. We hadn't seen a lot of that during the season, but, uh, man, in the playoffs, you need to be able to lean back on your run, and it's showing here. Well, Dunhill has struggled in the second half. He's just two of his last 10, Charles, so they've gone a little bit more to the run game. Now Dunhill's going to drop to throw that pass. is incomplete. Two for his last 11. Rain Rie with the deflection coming back in after being injured, second and 10. I mean, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not totally opposed to passing it in this situation, but, I mean, you've been running some pretty effective play action and maybe a rollout just to keep them on their toes. Second down. Fort Worth tries to mix it up. Now they'll pass. Heavy blitz. That's Aaron go. Alexander. That. And Aaron Alexander's got a first down. Boy, Alamo City only dropped three deep. And a really nice read from Marcus Dunhill picks up another first. And he had a whole crew waiting to block for him when he caught it as well. Look at that block. And he had the, the, the tight end, uh, Robert Garrett Jr. And I think James Jennings as well. Alamo City lucky that that was not... Uh, 
was not as bad as it could have been. They, if they limit Fort Worth to a field goal, it's still a touchdown deficit. Dunhill going to drop the throw again. That pass is almost picked off. Oh, nearly taken away by Rain Rie. Second Ooh. and ten. Oh, God, that would have been a huge turnaround for this game. Woo. I, I, Cam, I'm telling you, you, you can't push it downfield at this point. You're in a perfect position, and you've been running it well. Short passes, just hold on to that and at least walk away the field goal and put the pressure on ACA. And remember, the wind is in the face of Amelia Rose for Fort Worth right now here in this fourth quarter. Dunhill dropping to throw. Dunhill's pass is deflected oh. at the line, oh. and then a late hit and roughing the passer on Alamo City. Oh, that is crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. You know, Cam, what it did, it nullified an outstanding defensive play by McSlim. I think that was McSlim. Just blocking that oh. pass. Oh, that's just, that's heartbreaking. I, w I wonder if Mart, did Mart think that Dunhill still had the football? Because the ball, I, I, I don't know. That, I mean, it's it's certainly a penalty. He certainly hit him yep. late, but that is a, that's brutal timing right there. Yeah, two big penalties against uh, ACA tonight. First down and 10, 3.48 to go in the fourth. Dunhill, pressure, it's no. picked up, pass is caught. Man, he just whipped that one in there to Minson for a seven-yard gain. If you're going to throw it to anyone on that team in that position, you got to throw it to Minson. I mean, he, he's the guy that can catch that ball in that traffic, bring it in, and fight through, fight through the defenders and get extra yards. Second and three, the artillery trying to hang on. What an answer from Fort Worth here, the 13th play of their drive. Handoff, Bacon, Bacon, stopped, Bacon. won't be denied near the first down. He didn't get there. But man, Cam, he didn't get there, but man, did he try. A great effort by Bacon. Bacon has been, he's been opening my eyes tonight. Great game so far. Tough playing, tough running tonight. Baker's in the backfield, third and inches. Alamo City looking for a stand and one more chance. Alexander motions out of the backfield. Handoff, Baker, got it! First down, down to the two! Wow. The artillery still have one last shot. And they're eating up time as well, Cam. I mean, I think the best, that, that's actually not a bad scenario to get that first down and have a couple yards in there so you can keep working the clock. First and goal will be the final play, possibly before the two-minute warning. Alamo City looking for a goal line stand. 14th play of the drive. Dunhill under center. Draw. Bacon touchdown. Oh. What an answer from Fort Worth. Oh, what a smart play to go play action there. And who, who are you going to give it to? You're going to give it to the person, the running back, that has been money all night when you put him in a position where you need to get positive yards, and that's Jay-Z Bacon. Hand it off to him. Let him do his magic. Let him show his strength. And great blocking up front. What, what a drive. Way to answer ACA. You know, uh, Charles, this drive started with a Robert Garrett Jr. run, and it ended with a Jay-Z Bacon draw, two plays we hadn't seen all night long. Really good play calling there from Fort Worth and good offensive diversity. I would say outstanding play calling by Fort Worth. I mean, I mean, that was, <laughs> that's what you needed to do to take control of this game. You don't push it downfield and let that aggressive, you know, highly effective offensive uh, secondary for ACA cause a turnover. You just, you be solid, you make positive gains, and you don't make a mistake, and they relied on their running game, and it, it uh, worked out for them. Kronik on the return, not much room for the 26. The last two drives for Alamo City have been a 13-play, 65-yard touchdown and a 10-play, 79-yard uh, touchdown drive, both of which took over three minutes and 45 seconds off the clock. You see the numbers, they're almost dead even offensively uh, but that uh, interception in the in the first half Charles that helped get 
uh, Fort Worth a little bit of good field position. And just the slow start are the only differences in this game. Well, yeah, most definitely. And and the unfortunate news for ACA is Fort Worth can just kind of sit back deep and uh, like that. You know, yeah. Incomplete pass that snaps the streak of Ace Fennec, who was just on an absolute tear. Yeah, two and this whole game. I mean, <laughs> the the defense of Fort Worth, but also the two key mistakes by uh, ACA and those penalties. I think is what uh, is kind of where we are now. Cameron Duty, Rochelle Colston standing by. That kickoff's in about 50 minutes from Vancouver, Tulsa, and Vancouver ready to do battle as that pass. Looking for Kalia's incomplete third down and ten for ACA. Yeah, I'm, I, I think for ACA, what they're looking for is, uh, you know, the defense to show some deep zone, and they make an adjustment on the line and flood it. I mean, at this point, if they just go one for one, I mean, they're kind of rolling the dice. Four receivers for Ace. Dime look for the Toros. Trying to move on and play the D.C. Dragons in the quarterfinal round of next weekend's playoffs. Fennec drops the throw. Fires incomplete. Again, tight coverage. And this is more of what we saw in the first half from the Toros. Fourth down and ten just before the two-minute warning, Charles. I think, I mean, you have to go for it. Oh, you most definitely have to go for it. And, uh, it, you know, I think they have a pretty good shot at making a, a first down here because I think that everyone in Fort Worth is going to be no, 30 yards deep. Four receivers to keep the drive alive. And potentially the season. Hendricks in motion. He was sensational today. Stepped up big for this offense when they needed him most. Fourth down. Fennec. Play fake. Fires. That hasn't worked all day. Turnover on downs. And uh, Fort Worth is just one first down away from putting this thing away. Two minute warning, Ron Haynes. And just to reside, holding things down for me and Charles today. This is the wild card opener right here on SFL YouTube. Well, it didn't look like it at the start, Charles, but we got treated to an excellent playoff game here today. Oh, well, I mean, as I said at the top of the game, both of these teams are, are packed with talented players. And, I mean, and divisional rivals, I mean, it had the perfect making for a, a great playoff game. ACA, you know, hats off. They uh, were down and they came back, you know, had some fight in them. But Fort Worth, it, it's all consistency. I think this season, Fort Worth's been a more consistent team than ACA, and uh, they're moving on to the next round. Alamo City going through... A lot of changes in this offseason. The four acres, uh, Garrison Blue and Gunny McGuire write the next chapter for this uh, franchise that has had probably, Charles, the uh, the most complex history um, in the SFL over the years. But, man, no matter who's been at the helm, they are always super exciting to watch. And it's, um, you know, it's it's a shame to see the this era of of ACA football fall short but um you know can't wait to see what's next in store for this organization I mean so from my standpoint I mean being attached to this team as Lone Star I mean it's sad to see some of the folks leave that uh, I knew back when I was there I have a lot of respect for them family to me um but you know the good the good news is that they're handing it off to some uh some really solid uh quality you know, folks and uh, great ambassadors of not only, you know, their team, but also the SFL. So I think things are looking good. Uh, it's unfortunate they lost this. And it's also a shame that some of those folks are moving on. But, uh, you know, the SFL is ever changing and, uh, you know, it just keeps getting better. Well, Fort did not pick up the first down. So never say never. Amelia Rose's kick uh, is good. It is a two score game, but Alamo City's out of timeouts. And they are down two scores. So it would take a miracle, Charles, but I suppose it is still possible. And, you know, it wouldn't be a broadcast without you chastising me for making a, an opinion like that early in the game. <laughs> it's not, it's not early. Listen, if they were to win this game, that 
if Alamo City comes back and wins this game, I don't. I wouldn't blame you um, for uh, for calling it over. I mean, it's it's there's a 99.9% .9 chance at this point. Yep. And if the cam says I called it over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's not over? The over-under, which is a half a point away from being a push, which, of course, is impossible. But 47 right now on a 47 and a half over-under as Jack's data does it again. Um, as, uh, oh. yeah, it, it, there's some nerves there. But other otherwise, uh, the only nerves left in this one are on this Alamo City offense. They got to do something real quick. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a uh, quick strike, clock management, you know, near perfection. Ace Fennec got it. Midfield oh down to the 49-yard line. <laughs> that's Kalia. Uh, that's Kalia. Kalia is a beast. Fennec going to throw again, not spike. Fires, incomplete, looking for Kalia. That was another great stick from Delaney Nash. 117 to go. Yeah, Cam, I just, uh, <laughs> not sure what the what the right play call here is, but I'm I'm going back to my uh, my flood comment earlier. I, you know, one-on-one, -on -one I don't think is what you want. Second and 10, Fennec. Clean pocket, fires, incomplete, looking for blue, couldn't haul it in, that's his first target. Third down. Yeah, and it, yeah, they threw it into a mosh pit. It would be hard to bring down, but he's a pro. Charles, how jacked up are you for uh, Tulsa Vancouver coming up next? Oh man, I am so jacked up. What a night for football, wonderful. I am so jacked up. Third and 10. How many yards is Manning going to get to him? Zero. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Third and ten. Oh, Fenix pass oh. is deflected. And it, I was... Uh, Charles, that I, gun that did the tip? Yeah, I was just immediately looking for someone to come in and smack the quarterback so that uh, I mean, ACA could get their penalty back. I think that hit gone in the belly button. He got, that guy he got had some, some ups. air. Holy smokes. Above the rim. Fourth down. This is the game. Fennec. Three-man rush. Fennec's pass incomplete. Had a chance. Kalia couldn't bring it down. And the Fort Worth Toros are headed to D.C. next week in the 5-4 game of the quarterfinals. I mean, so the lesson is for anyone playing Fort Worth is if you have to rely on the deep pass, you're screwed because they are so tight in that secondary. You got to have you have to have balance, success, and run, and also those short and mid-range passes. Otherwise, they're going to kill you. What a game! I I don't think the final score, Charles, really reflects just just how tight this was there down the stretch. I mean, it was it was nails all the way to about two and a half to go when Fort Worth finally put that touchdown in. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean this has been a I mean. This, the score isn't going to, unfortunately for ACA, the score isn't going to show it. But, man, ACA showed a lot of fight tonight. I mean, they, they really did. And their defense, and we said that it's only a matter of time before, you know, uh, they're, they're not going to be able to stop Fort Worth if the offense, offense doesn't contribute. And we saw a little bit of that in the second half. But, man, Fort Worth just adjusted to it and just shut it down. A great effort by Alamo City. They uh, lost their first four games this season. Their first four losses, rather, were all by one score. It was uh, nip and tuck down the line. They lost uh, to Mexico City late in the season. It looked like everything was starting to collapse around them. They beat Los Angeles. They got the tiebreakers to go their way, in part because of a big win over Fort Worth in week one. And uh, they, they showed no quit here tonight. Fort Worth, though, advances. And what a drive, Charles, when they needed it. They were, they were only up by three. They got that 15-play, 64-yard drive, and that may have been the drive of the season for the Toros. They advance and win 30-17. to 17. Let's take a look at the final stats and your player of the game, Charles. Um, 
this is gonna this might be a, a little odd, but I'm I am gonna go for Jay Z Bacon, and here's why. We're looking at a team that is, and we said it at the top of the game, they're very pass heavy. They were in a crucial part of the game where they needed to be conservative and they needed to run the ball. They were smart enough to do that. They put it in the hands of Char of uh, Jay-Z Bacon and he executed. I mean, he doesn't have a ton of stats, but he did what he needed to do, kept the chains rolling, ate up the clock and, and uh, kind of shut down that momentum that ACA was building up. I totally agree with you, Charles. I'll give one out to the defensive side. Vincent led the game in tackles with 12. He had that interception at the end of the first half that was critical um, for Fort Worth that kind of really spoiled the uh, Alamo City momentum. They got a touchdown off that interception. And I think without that pick, Charles, I think maybe Alamo City wins this game. So yeah, Definitely. And, uh, and here's what I'm going to say, Cam, before we go. If this game is anything like the rest of the playoff games, just hold on tight because it's going to be a roller coaster. Kickoff in Vancouver about 40 minutes away. Charles, we'll see you in the championship, right? Yes, sir. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you then for Ron Haynes, Justin Reside in the Stats Truck, Charles Doherty. I'm Cameron Irvine. Tulsa, Vancouver comes up top of the hour. Cameron Duty, Rochelle Colston. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody.